time to get serious, man. Let's go to work. Let's go to work, bro. We can sit here and listen to good music made by this man all day. This nigga don't make bad music, bro. It's time to go to work, bro. I told him to make sure you put together some pimping, because I knew you was coming up here. You feel me? I know the type of shit you like. What's so, up? I know this your first time in the trap, but it better not be your last. What's so, up? Appreciate Been my man. partner. Forever. One of the realest niggas in the game, Jack. Represents Nashville very well. Very unique individual, man. Independent hustler, been in the rap game, putting it down for a minute. Build a hardcore, strong fan base that fuck with this nigga the long way, bro. Don't even do no shit like this. I, I had, I had to put this shit together about three years. <laughs> finally made it. Finally made it, bro. He coming outside to talk shit just because he fuck with me like that. Special occasion. Special occasion, man. So I gotta make sure we cover enough ground, journalistically, mm. cause this shit ain't gonna be happening like that. Mm. Mm. One of, shit a handful. He said it, so I don't even remember the last time he did an interview. What Been putting it interview? down in the rap game for a minute, man. Got one of the hardest catalogs in the game. My nigga, Starlito. First of all, welcome to the trap. What's up? Appreciate you. Appreciate you for having me. Man, how the hell you been? Been all right. Been all right, man. Just living. That's what's up, man. What's been going on? Uh, fatherhood. There you go. Foremost, you know. My daily. I'm, uh, I like to think I'm probably one of the most normal rappers out there. Like, I kind of take pride in it. Man, what is normal? Well, I'm saying just on a live level. Yeah. Just kind of um, outgrowing some of the the norms, the, the the standards we like build up within the culture of it, you know. Try to just blend in and, and like I enjoy doing regular shit. Yeah. Like growing up so fast, growing up in this shit, like you said, I've been, been at it for a while, so kind of enjoy it. Being at a different pace. Yeah. When did you first start fucking with the music? Uh, sh a little over 20 years ago. I put out hey, my first project. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we salute that shit, man. That's why we, we named our tour the Ghetto Legend, man, because we want to give a salute to everybody that we fucked with, all the people that came before us in this life. Being in the entertainment industry, man, that's, shit, that's a milestone, yeah. man. Especially when they say they don't give you but 15 minutes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I put out my first project 2003, so that was 19 years ago, but. Yeah. Yeah, I've been at it since high school, really. But put out my first project like my sophomore year of college. It was pretty much out of the six months later, I was dropping out of college to getting a record deal. That first record deal, fresh out of college, man. That, yeah. What that shit hit like? Uh, it was like it was like college in itself. It was like a learning curve. Something, uh, something to learn from. It was, it was fun. It was fun as hell, though. Yeah. So what did your parents say when you like? Hey, you know, Mom, I, I know I told you I was gonna go, you know, finish the school thing off and whatnot. But I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be a rapper. Uh, my folks was pretty supportive. Cause it was, you know, it was chasing a dream. How long did it take you to convince them though? Not saying at that moment, when did they know that you was good at rapping? Uh, I mean, around that time, it was like I was making a name for myself. I was like the guy around the way with the music between the neighborhood and between the school. So, you know how it is. I mean, when you're building a buzz, like people coming to them. Like, yeah. My music, so that was like physical CDs, mixtapes, you know. So people they know was in tune with my music. So it wasn't like a secret by the time I was dropping out of school. It ain't take a lot of convincing, because I mean, more times than not, you go to school to get a job. You yeah, go yeah. to school to try to, you know, figure out what you're going to do with your life. And 
and on create some opportunities on the back end of it. So my opportunities are like right in front of my face. I'm like, I'm gonna keep paying money out of out of my pocket to go to school. Or I'm gonna go get some money, you know. You know, a lot of times when people. Um, parents be cool with them doing music or anything that got something to do with the arts it's because they like come from a musical family or you know an entertainment type family are you first generation entertainer or yeah yeah it wasn't it wasn't none of that like don't have a like super uh, musical like background or lineage or any of that I was I was just wanting to rap you know it was it was sports, it was basketball one night, and realized that wasn't going to take me too far. So next thing I was most interested in was was the rapping. Like battle rap culture, that was that was a time when, you know, people would rap wherever, you know, ciphers outside, I rap in the parking lot of the school, in the student union center, yeah, wherever a crowd of people were, you know. You used to be shitting on niggas? In uh, battle rap? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just like battle rapping, like. Just rapping and shit rap, you, you know, the best just rapper. Be a, I'm the best rapper in the world. I take nigga, your not girl. in 89. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was too far back. I was way yeah, out there. <laughs> <laughs> the coldest, oldest, boldest nigga you ever seen. I don't even wear no blue jeans. <laughs> <laughs> that type No, it wasn't that time then. Nah, it was punchlines and all that then. It was, you know. But I mean, that's, I made a name for myself doing that, you know, along with trying to figure out how to get in the studio, how to make a song. It actually, you know, I guess that's, that's still performing art, performance art, I guess. Just being able to rap, captivate a group of people. Then you put pen and pad and, you know, craft songs. I think I'm so far removed from that, because now it's like really into the, song structure, songwriting, making something that's, that you can feel, you know. Man, does it still surprise you that half of your fans probably don't even know that you changed your name to Starlito? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's interesting. I, I listened to some uh, some older music. He was, just, he was talking about a, a Super Bowl song a minute ago. Yeah. And uh, when I went by All Star, and it's, yeah, it is kind of a trip because a lot of people don't know that. You know, you got hip to my music in the last 10 years or so. I've been professionally going by Starlito since I got out of the, uh, that first deal. Yeah. And we changed our name around the same time. What was y'all name? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never look at that nigga the same. Just, just call him Jack. <laughs> it was for the best. <laughs> sure. He made his he made his mark though. It's still a lot of people that only know him as his old name. A lot of people didn't accept Jack Thriller. You, the funny thing about that shit too is the, people, the niggas didn't want to call me that shit back in the day, but they, they now that I'm Jack, they would go out of their way to call me the old shit. <laughs> Just, you know what I'm saying, as a, as a reminder, it's funny now. I knew the nigga when he was such and such. Yeah. <laughs> it's a time stamp. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, that's how, that's how some people greet me and let me know how long they've been rocking with me. Yeah. It's the same. Like, what made you change your name? Though? Why, why, the, why the face live? Um, in part, it was like, like I said, I had a record deal, and it kind of felt like it ran its course. It was more or less stagnant. And so it was rebranding myself and kind of a, a makeshift way to get out of the deal, if, if you will. I was just like, right. okay, well, the rights to my recordings under this name belong to somebody else. I'm just gonna put out music under a different name almost. I mean, that was me trying to, I guess, be a wise guy about it. And then it just stuck. It was kind of catchy. It was, you know, I was already like, kind of referring to myself as that within the music. I, I had a project called Starlito's Way, kind of playing off the Carlito's Way, the movie. That shit hard too if you ain't never heard it. And, um, I know it's a lot of people watching from different pockets of the world. Fuck with that one. Yeah, so that that project was like, it was working for me and um, 
I just kind of ran with it from there, from like a concept project to just like shit. It's got a ring to it. Cause my my original name that I like signed was too damn long. It was All Star Cashville's Prince. Cause it was like there was already a, a, a DJ I think named All Star, so we couldn't actually register that name. I was like I don't want this long ass name, and <laughs> it was kind of like. I ain't gonna call myself the prince of my city forever. Like, you yeah. know, at 19, that was, I guess, was the cool. thing it was cool at the time. But it, I'm like, wow, it was just. Hold on, who, who was the king of the city? Uh, I mean, I, I think it was just, it was kind of like uh, announcing that I'm next up. Kind Big. Of thing. Got you. you. Know, it may have been several kings, if you will. It was just. Like I said, I was I was a teenager. I was the youngest person putting out music around my way at that time. Like putting out my own music, especially. So, how many times you had to buy yourself out of contract? Oh, uh, I think not formally. That didn't really happen because my first deal it didn't it didn't generate that much money. It wasn't you know what I'm saying it was it was business. I, I got an advance and that was money being spent. But they serviced a few singles, and it kind of, at a point, was like, just kind of go go a separate way, just cut our losses kind of thing. So it wasn't like a, a buyout kind of thing. Once it ran its course, I just didn't, I didn't continue to do business with, with the people I was doing business with at the time. When you chose the name Starleto, what was the process of it? And like, what were some things that you had before it leading up to Starleto? Uh, like I said, All Star was the sports thing. Like from just being a basketball player and just want to be on top of my game, if you will. And the Starlito thing kind of came from that movie at the time. Uh, Carlito's Way was one of my favorite movies because the, the, cold the uh, too. main character was just trying to get out the game. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He was doing everything to like get out the streets, get out the way, and it was you know the kept the, sucking uh, them back in. Right. A lure, and I felt like that was kind of where I was in life. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, I went to college and all that. I'm, I'm not running from being educated, or but I was, I'm still like from where I'm from, and uh, I wanted to use rap as a segue away from all that bullshit. So I felt like it was a parallel in that character, and like I said, it just kind of play, play on words, play off that name, and uh, really didn't have like a. I, th I probably went by something else when I was probably 15, just first rapping, but I ain't put out no music under the, you know, whatever the names was then. And you and Don Tripp got together and put the put a whole movement in play, man. How that shit come together? Uh, I think me and Tripp linked in like 2010, something like that. Uh, Yo Gotti was trying to sign Tripp. I was doing business with Yo Gotti at the time. And uh, it's when, around the time, when Don Tripp first signed with Interscope, we first had a big buzz. It was like popping on YouTube, freestyles going crazy. And uh, Gotti brought him to Nashville with him. Just had him on the road, they passed through. And we linked, you know, I heard his stuff, I thought he was cold, came to the spot. We knocked out a few songs and it was just kind of like, yeah, we, we on to something, we should do some more music. And at the time I was just watching the movie Step Brothers, like, on loop in the studio. I just thought it was just a funny ass movie. That stupid. shit funny. It's gonna be some activity. When the nigga put them motherfucking nuts on the drum set, <laughs> bro. And I was like, man, we should do, you know, we should run with this. You know, the camaraderie they had. It was yeah, just yeah. like grown ass kids, overgrown, so like Boats silly and shit. Exactly. And I think that was the first song on the project we called it Boats and Hoes. It was just playing I was just just quirky stuff within that movie and then shit fast forward over the next seven years we put out like three projects toured you know indie tours toured nationally off of <clears throat> something just kind of branding out there we step yeah. brothers if you will man that's some that's some if like that shit just feels so organic yeah man. it just like kind of happened like I said nothing red type shit yeah for sure but it, it came from like being willing to um to give props, to give it up. You know, a lot of times in, in the rap world, man, people like too tough for their own good or too full of themselves. Probably across the board, even for what y'all do, it's probably people that's cold 
or know y'all code, but they won't give it up for y'all like that. Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. February the 18th, I will be in Savannah, GA. Yes, yes, you heard that right. At the end of the day tour, it's coming to Savannah, February 18th. What's the name of the spot? At the Johnny Mercer Theater. Well, I've been having a ball in Oakland. I love this goddamn city. Y'all got the funniest homeless people I ever seen. I gave a nigga three dollars. He acted like those were the three he needed to not be homeless no more. Soon as I gave him the money, you didn't put me back in the motherfucking game. <laughs> nigga tried to whistle at me, didn't even whistle, just made the noise. Nephew, where are you? Come here. Where are you? Let me holler at you right quick. Johnny Mercer Theater, February 18th. At the end of the day, Carlos Miller, 8 o'clock, is going down in Savannah. Hit the link, get those tickets, man. You already know. February 18th at the Johnny Mercer Theater, I will be in Savannah. Because at the end of the day, you need to come see me. Hey, man, everybody, 85. 85 South Shore family, 85 percenters, man. I got a new podcast about the war on drugs, man. And uh, make sure you check it out. I think it's one of the dopest podcasts because we really talk about everything that's kind of missing from what we already know about the war on drugs. You know it's racist. The war on drugs. Yeah. The war on drugs podcast. Listen to it everywhere. Lava for good. iHeartMedia, Apple Music, Spotify, anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Check it out. You already know the war on drugs racist and it's unjust and it's fucked up for people who have less, right? Right. Well, we're gonna go into why it's that way, and it's exactly what you thought, and even more. So, yeah, it's me, Greg Glaude, the good people at Lava for Good, the War on Drugs podcast. Yeah, tell the 85% of the watch it, because they listen watch when you talk. Watch the War on Drugs podcast. Well, don't watch it, listen, because you listen can't watch it. it. Oh, watch, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So it's audio, listen to it on the ride, a lot of information, stuff we need to hear. Dope podcast, let's go. The War on Drugs podcast, let's That's get it. Dope. No, nah, they can't. That's it. Yeah, man. I don't know what that shit about. It, it happens. And so it was kind of rare, like, crossing paths, like, man, this nigga cold. And the same thing, he's willing to give it up, and we just put it together. Yeah. Rather than being like, okay, I know he good, and I know I'm good, and it's going to be competitive, or I'm going to try to shit on him, or act like I don't see what he got going on. It was more so like, bro, I see you coming up. I had been in it at that time with six, seven years professionally. I, also, I, I didn't want to see somebody make the same mistakes I had made. Yeah. So it was like whatever I could add to what he had going on. And for sure, it brought me up too. Because he was, uh, like I said, the YouTube world, he, he had a different kind of buzz than I did. So I was able to kind of like take my underground thing, catch it up to speed with what was going on like on the internet. Yeah. And uh, grow so like you a new built audience. Your, your audience at a time when you actually had to go outside and do flyers and promo yeah. and radio and all this shit. Right. Now you seeing that people can just literally jump online, upload, upload some shit, yeah. whether they know who these people are or not. Yeah. And the shit, the sound may go viral, and people have to find out who the person is that said the shit. So, so, yeah, it's different, man. It's different. I mean, it's a technology. I yeah. mean, the time's gonna change. It's, it's about staying ahead of the curve, being forward thinking, because, I mean, every every couple of years we get a new platform, we got yeah. a, a new way of presenting. It's just information, you know. How would you how would you introduce yourself to the new generation? Like, a lot of them watch this show. Um, Or do you even care about that? I was just about to say, man, as it's, it's, it's crazy as it sounds, like, I don't, if like, they I find you, they find you. Yeah, I ain't, that, I ain't that stuck on myself as far as it goes. I feel like I've done what I've done at this point. I'm going to continue to do it as it makes sense. I just, like, kind of go out for feeling. So if it finds you and it moves you, like, I mean, I'm I'm starly though. I make music. Like, it just kind of <laughs> yeah. starts and ends there. Cause, and everything not for everybody, you know? Yeah. It's like I, I listen to some stuff and I'm like, damn, I... I don't feel like that no more. I ain't in that headspace, but I was. Right then, it was, you know, it was like a snap, a snapshot, a time capsule, if you will. Yeah. So. Do you ever find yourself trying to, like, you, the, uh, feeling like, damn, I, I wish I could catch that, that, that same hunger or be that guy one more time? 
Sometimes when I look at my old shit, I admire him, but I, I, like you just said, I don't got it no more. Mm. And, or when people ask me, can I do that? Or, Why don't you do that anymore? Right. Uh, I don't think I, I do look at it like, damn, it's different. I feel different about the shit. Like, but I'm not necessarily like chasing that. I'm not chasing <laughs> no, no light I once had or otherwise, because I just realized that's, that's what that was. Whatever I was going through, you know, environmentally or just, it's a time capsule. Like, music I made in a given moment, I just, I want it to be pure. I want it to reflect something. It, it's just like the human experience. So, like, I sound different than I did, you know, probably a, a few, you know, smoked a few or whatever. <laughs> like, just things that change your voice, change your, you know, your temperament. Cadence, I, everything. Yeah, everything. Like, like you said, if it's hunger, like once upon a time, I want to be heard so bad. Now I got to the point where it's like, I ain't really talking unless I got something to say. Like, I ain't just, Check me out. I'm, you know, like, nah, I'm... <laughs> Do you still feel like you underground? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Why is that? Um, because <clears throat> I, I feel like my buzz or, or my audience is, is like, homegrown. I feel like I, I feel like I earn my fans, my, my audience, I should say, like, one by one almost. And, like, it's non-traditional. Like, I ain't had a song on the radio in 12 years, something like that. Um, I mean, I've had music videos play on TV. I, I use a lot of uh, the networks and uh, I format my stuff like a, a mainstream artist yeah. or, I, you know, I place it in the same marketplace. But I, my whole thing since I went independent was to go against the grain and do it my way and and uh, if you build it, they'll come kind of, kind of thing. So it's not like... I mean, I partner and done business with with companies, but there's nobody really like empowering what a you know what it is that I do. Mm. No so, corporate interest. Nah, not really, not really. I mean, like I said, I I work with people, but it's it's gonna be on my time and on my terms. Yeah. Like working with people on some music shit. Like you said, you've been in the game for a minute. Who left on your list of people you want to work with? Uh. Oh, that's hard to say. Uh, probably singers and, and not not too much on the rapping. Like, yeah. Like, the, you know, work with R&B artists that I grew up with. Like, I was listening to Tony Tone, Tone, whatever, on the, on the ride down. I was like, damn, music don't sound like this no more. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm going to work with, like, somebody in that, in that line, you know. If, if anything, but I, I just, I like to work with people that want to work with me. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. That's why I work with Jack. Yeah, for sure. I know that nigga love to work with me, man. Man, I'm with all my heart. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Don't <laughs> talk to this nigga, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't overstem myself too much. It's yeah. Just, things happen how they're supposed to. 2003, when you was all star Cashville Prince, what did the dream look like? And what does it look like now for you? So it was it was just like being hurt, trying to, you know, get out into the world. It's like coming to age. Like I was, I said what, 18, 19 years old, I put out my first project. I'm just just figuring life out, you know. Mm. But is, is there a certain level or place that you saw yourself that you like if you was the did you wanna be the, the next uh, 50 Cent. Did you want to be the next Tupac or, uh, or Dream is like that? How, how big did you want to do it? Or did you just, was it really man, just about being heard? On one level, it was, just, it was about being heard. I think, uh, I could say this, like looking back when I just take my whole journey in, I think once upon a time, I was like afraid of being successful. And that's like a, a real thing. Like I, you think you want, a certain level of success or appeal or whatever until you, you get it, until you get close to it, it and yeah. it's like, oh shit, like it's, it's a lot, it's damn near too much kind of thing. And so, somewhere in my mind, you know. What I was that moment though? Uh, Probably like, sign on cash money even. Like I, I can remember being at the, 
the house that was on uh, Cribs or How I'm Living or whatever, BET, MTV shows. Like, it was at the, the house in, uh, in New Orleans, the jacuzzi in the middle of the living room and shit. I remember, like, pulling up there, uh, seeing these cars. I was at a pool party, I think, Essence Fest, like, summer 04. And I'm like, I'm around all these people that I've been watching on TV the last like five, six years. Or people like I, I really listen almost to that music exclusively at a time. Like you know, we're from the south, from the mid south. Like that was soundtrack to the hood. I'm like, damn, I'm right here amongst these people. Like, and it's like you almost ask yourself, like, what the hell I'm doing here? Like, I mean, every time I, around this nigga, I always feel like, man, don't listen to I don't this belong here. <laughs> and uh. I remember being at a pool party, like probably like you meeting, you making peers of people that you, you know, held up in a, in a certain esteem. And highly respected and shit. What you say? They highly respected. Like people For you sure. I got the utmost respect. So, sure. and eventually working with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They become your label mates, your, you know, your comrades. Your friends you and shit like, like that. Traveling yeah. and like, damn. You know, it, it seems at that age, like, like you said, to that point, it was a dream. Look like it was almost like surreal. And then you don't have no training and no practice for this shit, so you just coming out of you, nowhere. Yeah. And I mean, I think being a, amongst people that had that like that was that level of success, you can kind of almost find yourself feeling out of place. Like I think if I had to like view anything is it's not a regret, but like a mistake is like trying to fit in instead of trying to stand out. You know what I'm saying? Because um, like you're amongst all this, like, damn, well, I need to move like this. Or I want to I wanna do what they've already done when in fact I was doing some some shit in, you know, in my own way or in my own lane. I, I look back like I should have just kept chipping away, approaching things the way that I was doing it that got me in those rooms, it got me around those people versus like, all right, how can I make something that fits in with their brand and stuff? And eventually, you know, I figured that out for myself. It's like, yeah. man, I'm gonna I'm be the best version of me. I'm gonna, uh, there's nobody that could be me better than me kind of thing, you know? I think I, um, I made a lot of progress once I figured it out for myself. And there's nothing to be afraid of in terms of success because I don't, I don't measure it against what anybody else got going on. You know? And that's back to the underground thing. Like, Hell yeah, but shit. Even, even still though, you one of the motherfuckers who made the underground shit work for them. Yeah. Like you successful at, and like that shit hard as fuck. Like, yeah. What kind of tips and tricks and advice would you give to the next generation who want to follow, who see you do it and say, shit, I want to do it like Lito. He made that shit work. Uh, gotta figure out what works for you. I mean, I think for sure, like, being innovative, like, I mean, I, I understand the question, but like, you doing it, you know what I'm saying? The brand that, that y'all building is like, have your own terms, have your own standards. And um, like I said, you build it, they'll come. Like, I don't think I have a, like a blueprint for nobody to follow, cause so much of this came with no rules. Like, so it was figuring out, like, I think this is a good idea. I'm just, I'm gonna just mash with it. I'm gonna go with it and see if it stick kind of thing, you know? I mean. You ain't had a deal, though, in 12 years, right? Uh, well, I had, like, distribution you, deals. Distribution deals. You've been yeah. independent pretty much since right. then. When, at what point did you say, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna do this myself. Fuck a deal. I don't need, I'm not signing with nobody else. I think I got this now. Oh, I know what they was doing over there. Man, just <laughs> figuring out, like I said, I started to understand the, like the the power, the reach of the of the internet, and just like direct to consumer. Like that's where it was going. Like I, we used to go to a record store every Friday and get the albums just come out on Tuesdays, but we had record stores that would sell the music early on Fridays. We used to go to a record store and like physically pick up CDs. Eventually, I start getting my music from download links. And, right on your phone. Right. That's and it. I'm like, which, I mean, I can, I don't gotta press up CDs no more. I'm cutting out a lot of overhead. 
you know. So, like, I'm just a record label would not, in general, it's artists that do it now more so, but they wouldn't let you drop a project every month. But yeah, I had a studio at the spot, so I could record music as fast as I could come up with it, as long as I had some beats or whatever. And um, I was just like, man, I'm just going to just keep trying, keep chipping away and just, you know, I think uh, I'm going to use what's right here in front of me. I'm going to use my resources. Um, I'm like, I don't really, because at a point it wasn't even about selling the music. It, it, it was just about being heard. Like, we used to press up all these CDs to jump out in traffic and hand them out and give them away. I mean, we sold CDs locally, but... A lot of that was promo. You were saying you got a, yeah. a promo disc. Hell yeah. <clears throat> it's like... you do in February the 17th? It's like three days after Valentine's Day. Because I'm going to be in North Charleston, South Carolina at the North Charleston Performing Arts Center, baby. That's at 8 o'clock p.m. It's going crazy. Carlos Miller is bringing jokes like you've never seen jokes before February the 17th. Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. You want to add some excitement to your sporting events? Then download our favorite app, Prize Pick. Here you can choose any sport, any player. I guarantee they've got what you're looking for. And it's easy to play too. All first time users that deposit and use a promo code will receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. How does it work? You pick two to six players, and if they will go on to score more or less than their prize picks possessions, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Available in over 30 states. What are you waiting for? Go head over to Prize Picks right now and tap that link below. And tell them 85 South sent you over for 100% deposit match and up to $100. Prize Picks. Prize Picks entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Download Prize Picks today and play daily fantasy sports with us. Make sure you use promo code 85 South when you sign up. I know for a fact I had them shits all the way up until about uh until my first, my Cadillac caught on fire. I can't remember the year, but I know when I moved to Atlanta, I brought all that shit up here. But I wanted to ask you this. You said Trip introduced you to a whole new audience, the digital audience, the YouTube audience. When did you start seeing the impact and effects of that? Uh, immediately. Immediately, like, bro had a, a viral moment. Yeah. Like, almost to, like, start his career. Yeah. Let and, um, my son. Yeah. And, I mean, he did a bunch of freestyles, kind of the same format. It was just, like, him... Most basic handheld camera, he in a booth recording himself rapping on oh, crazy. a very basic setup, but it's like no frills. This is just rap in its purest form. And he was having like millions of views out there. At the time, I probably hadn't shot three videos, five like actual music videos. I maybe had a couple like that had some kind of production quality to it. Because being on a label, and at the time, like music videos used to cost like five figures on the low end. So if you if you got a deal, it's gonna chew your budget up to to shoot a one video at that time. So it was yeah. like you got crews and setups. They had it was like shooting a movie. Yeah. Exactly. It was it was huge. The setup for it was huge. As technology went to handhelds and you know a, a lot of I won't even say corners get cut. It's just. The standard of how you do stuff is different. Like I said, bro had the most basic setup you could possibly have, and it was drawing people in. So it was like, damn, I ain't, I don't even, that's not where, I'm, where my appeal comes from. Right. But uh, like, we went from doing that music, and we went and shot a bunch of uh, music videos. We shot like five videos for the first project, and got like tens of millions of views, and that was new to me. You know, I, I didn't I think I may have had one video that had a million views at the time. 
and um, versus everything was putting out was just like out of here, you know. How much was the videos that y'all was shooting? How much did they cost? Too? Yeah. Not five figures. Right, um, nowhere near, right? Nah, nah, at the time, I, I, I can't say exactly, I'm not sure, but um, trying to think. It wasn't first. like damn near free like it is now, especially if you buy a camera and you hire a motherfucker. Yeah, I was gonna say, we, we bought camera, that was the Where thing. Where he, because he, he done triple shooting and editing his videos, right? The original stuff when he was in the booth, yeah, uh -huh. I, I think he was, I'm pretty sure he was putting that together, so. Yeah, all the way across. But by the time we was doing videos for that project, we were working with videographers and um, working with people like buying some of those cameras, buying the Canon cameras, the handhelds. And um, I think we shot a couple of them on like like red cameras. And you know, this was 2011. So mm -hmm. that was, those, some of the- They changed the game with the videos. Yeah, yeah dude. some of those cameras and setups were like, Nice and, yeah. and elaborate, but like I said, it wasn't, it didn't cause what it caused in the decade prior. You People were shooting like on 70s back then. Yeah. yeah, I think I bought a couple 70s during that time. Yeah. But here, think about it. You get, you buy one and then you fuck around and get a video that go viral. Yeah, you didn't pay for it then. Nah. So, it's yeah. worth it. It's worth it. Uh, it's, or you creating a job for somebody around you because who's buying stuff just. To give people around yeah. something to do. Nigga, figure out how to work this camera. Exactly. Are like, you gonna be around anyway? You gonna be sitting here while I'm recording? Like, let's, you know, you got make a job, man. Sense. Hell yeah. Yeah. Jack, no. Jack used to direct a few videos and shit. Oh yeah, yeah. I did. My president is black. With Jeezy. Okay. I was assistant director on that. A couple other. Um, <clears throat> uh, oh look, yeah, we brought up Jeezy, man. You had. You and Jesus had a hit when he was first really getting successful in the game, man. Mm. You got to you got to catch that wave with him too, man. What was that moment like? Yeah, um, man, it was a part of that. Everything happening real fast. Yeah, like, yeah. It was the Grey Goose, uh, Grey Goose song that ended up on a little bit of everybody's mixtapes and, and otherwise. It, it was cool. It was a different Atlanta then. Was, I mean, I'm from Nashville. We just come to Atlanta to kick it and party. It was just always, you know, a party city and just a different pace than back home. So that was cool to be a part of that that whole way. It was kind of the tail end of the crunk era, I think, and then, then trap music and street music. It was kinda, born. Yeah, yeah, it kind of went somewhere. So, Cause that was on Trap or Die. Yeah, it was. So I mean, it's it's cool to um, have my journey like overlap with a, with a lot of other people's yeah. that, that have you know done some some big things and just even if I'm just a, a small part of, of those legacies and stories, like this is cool. It's a cool thing to have work with the biggest artists in certain moments of hip hop <clears throat> over the course of like 15 years or so. Yeah. You know? Man, I see you and Spitter putting together a nice movement. Now, you don't even know that. People been asking for that for a long time. I know yeah. you get on social media every so often, and you see you'll get probably 15 mentions. Man, go on 85 South Shore. Yeah. Every time they I do that shit, day. I send it straight to him. He was like, Lito, come on, man. Yeah, every day. So what, you, what you and Spitter cooking up, man? Uh, we, we do to make some more music. We've been, we've been touring. We've we done quite a few shows together this year. and. Uh, Hopefully we, we might get in the studio today or tomorrow. We yeah. got a, a concert down in Atlanta tomorrow. So just working. I mean, we go back 05, 06. You know, we were Pierce, that's what I'm saying, to come like, up together. Yeah, label mates <clears throat> at one time. We was on cash money at the same time. That's yeah. hard. We used to um we used to have like photo shoots and, and shit for like we had something for Couple of shoes for like magazines and doing press and things like that together way, way, way back in the day. What's your fondest memory of being on Cash Money? Um, One of them ones you never forget. Fondest memory. You still got that chain? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> I, I ain't saying it like that. I just, who knows where it is? It's lost in the sauce somewhere. It's like that. Man, I think I probably left it on somebody's dresser or something. Like, just living fast. <laughs> I was I was thugging at the time. I'm, 
And once it was gone, it was gone. I, I heard, yeah, I heard plenty of stories. Are you like thinking that? of that? I just wanted to tell you, man. It's like you always rap like about independence and you know what I'm saying the business part of it too, man. And we salute that. It's certain artists that always push that type of shit where it's like the music gonna be good and they still gonna be saying some good shit. So yeah. I, I wanted to let you know that that's why I fuck with it. Cause that's what give me the type of motivation to do shit like this, man. It's people like pushing for it, for like niggas to own their own shit and to have their own shit, man. Mm-hmm. My fondest memory at Cash Money, I was just trying to make sure I answered that question, was uh, probably uh, working alongside and being able to like witness Lil Wayne in a in his element of you know him becoming a super super superstar because I grew up on his music and um, so I was a huge fan already working with him you know have collaborating been featured on the album and went platinum uh, but like seeing him in the studio was like it was that was an experience I I, I was on and um, definitely soaked up some things like work ethic wise and uh, also. Just like I said, witnessing it, cause it was like he went from in my generation or the era that I came up in. He was at least for my immediate peers, he was kind of like our favorite rapper, cause he was close to our age or whatever. And to see him kind of become everybody's favorite rapper, more or less. And I used to listen to his first album, Driving to High School. Yeah, that shit crazy. And uh, just to be like amongst it. Like, whenever he had that run of 70, 80 songs, you know, features and whatever, it was it was some crazy stats, but like, I was around, you know what I'm saying? I was around during that time. I was like, damn, it, you know. There's some of that I took with me and applied in my own way, not in a superstar sense. What's your process sense. now, like your recording process? Uh, you recording the daytime or the nighttime? Man, whenever, whenever I get the urge, like, uh, that's kind of I, I always how it's been. I try to keep a, a setup wherever I live. So if I roll over out of bed, I can go press the buttons. And, and Or if I just get an idea, I want to jot four lines down and just put this down so I don't forget it. But I, I mean, sometimes I like to get outside of the crib and go to you know nicer studios, bigger studios, and feel like a rapper, if you will, or, or whatever. But uh, it's not, it ain't really a daytime or nighttime thing. You need some girls in the studio? Not, ne- <laughs> Part not of necessarily. Favors. Not necessarily. I mean, it don't, it don't hurt. It, it depends on what the what the vibe is, what kind of music you make. And I for sure having people around, you know, it's inspiring or, you know, just even just kicking shit. If this was a studio session, something that we saying might end up on the track or, you know, make for a, a concept or and sometimes with women, of course, is give you something to play off of. You know? Yeah, the energy be different. Yeah. See, we gotta make sure we ask the questions, cause we be doing a terrible job of asking the fans questions and shit. So <laughs> we wanna ask questions that the fans will be like, man, why you ain't asking? Them? So like, I gotta ask you this, as a creative person, as a talented person, how do you avoid or get over writer's block or creative block? Um, don't say I ain't never did shit for y'all. It, I uh, try not to focus on it as far as a block, like, cause I don't really even think about it like that. Like, I'm either like on it or I'm not, and I don't really trip when I'm not, cause uh, I feel like the some of the best music, the best material I come up with was like impromptu. It just was a feeling. It was just like I got an idea and I'm gonna just try it or whatever. So. And you never know where that will come from. I can be, I've I written a lot of raps like in the car, you know, and I wasn't intentionally writing. It's just maybe because I wasn't sitting still, wasn't focused on it by itself, and something comes Let me to ask me. you this. I got it. Because a lot of young up and coming rappers going to hear you on here, and they listening, they hear what you're saying as, you know, one of their niggas. So I wanted to ask you, what kind of like, Recording cheats can you give out to the young up and coming rappers? You been a you been an up and coming rapper. Like some some shit that you figured out fucking around and you like, okay, if I do this, it'll fuck it'll improve this. 
Any recording uh, secrets that you can give the give the people out there? February 25th. Get where we're gonna be at. Philadelphia at the Carlos Miller Theater. Selma Clock, same thing. Every time, Selma Clock. Hey, y'all going to the Carlos show? It's that Selma Clock. Selma. Does it feel like you're paying more for delivery fees than your meals? With Dash Pass from DoorDash, you'll never have to worry about that again. It's the easiest way to get whatever you need delivered for less. Dash Pass is a membership from DoorDash that offers unlimited $0 delivery fees from thousands of eligible restaurants, grocery stores, and convenience stores. Once you join, you'll save on each eligible order and receive DoorDash credits back on all pickup orders. That means more money back in your wallet. It's just not savings on restaurant deliveries, flowers, pet supplies, groceries. Dash Pass has so much more to save on than just your favorite meals. Get what you want when you need it with any upfront commitments. You'll have the ability to cancel your membership at any time with no hidden or additional fees. You'll also enjoy the best of your neighborhood as you discover the new and best places near you. Get 50% off up to $20 in value on your next Dash Pass order when you sign up for a membership and redeem 85 South 2023 at checkout. That's 50% off your first Dash Pass order up to $20 in value with 85 South 2023. Say goodbye to delivery fees. Get Dash Pass from DoorDash today using 85 South 2023. When you've got zero delivery fees, you're free to get more because you can. Start your free month trial today. Dash Pass it, man. Dash Pass on they ass. You see what it is. All that DoorDash. You spent $80 on DoorDash. Only $15 of it was food. That ain't right. Get the Dash Pass. Save some cash. For your ass with the dash pads. Look, I don't want no problems with nobody. But February 19th, I will be in Columbus, Georgia at the Bill Hurd. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's going down at the Bill Hurd in Columbus, Georgia, February 19th. That's 2023, brother. Make sure you get those tickets and make sure you come to the show. Coming for the belt. I don't, I don't know if it's secrets, cause everything is, everything's so automated. Is everything's a lot easier to, to navigate as far as recording. I, the biggest thing for me was get finding an engineer, somebody that could um, make, make me math, sound yeah. how I wanted to sound. Yeah. You know, cause like I said, as my voice has changed over time, I got like more of a relaxed tone. And like being able to rap like I talk and it still be audible. It still be, you know, getting the levels together. It ain't a cheat code to that because it's in a mix. But uh, <clears throat> I went back to college and studied uh, recording industry, you know, I think like 2009. And I was sitting in class like learning how to read like EQs and this part of the graph, you know, looking at it from from almost like a science level. Levels and shit. And um, I had been at it. I had been professional for maybe six, seven years at that time, but I like wanted to understand it better. And Study your craft. Yeah, to me, that was that was almost a cheat code. It was, it's not a specific, like, man, use this plug-in or, cause it's about how you want it to sound. But like. Find your sound. Yeah. But to me, it was like, trying to just understand it on different levels helped me, cause, it helped me get, in, I, can, I can work with almost any engineer because I know I describe what it is that I'm trying to get out of. You know, I can kind of speak their language or I know what's going on on the screen. I think that the same thing, like you said, with videos. Like, I know how to edit videos and all that. I don't, I don't like to, it's time consuming, but I, I know how to ask for, I know how to get what I'm trying to get out of, you know, out of a project or whatever. Uh, you was talking about earlier about, you know, you appreciate being able to do normal things now. Yeah. And you just move on the side of a relaxed mode. So, you know, with that being said, uh, saying, you said, you said, talked about being a normal rapper. Uh, no, what were some of the person. ills of the game that uh, you could do without? Like, man, man this uh, ain't it. Like, the whole, like, 
status some like like a lot of this ends up feeling like you're wearing a mask almost and uh the thing about it when you wearing a mask you gotta keep it on all the time because in this uh as an entertainer a public figure or whatever it's not like i can go outside and just today and uh decide i'm not who i've been this entire time you know what i'm saying i was pumping gas before i jumped on the road early somebody the car next to me Lead up, ground, you know, and as to me, it's great. Nobody, nobody knew me, and nobody cared. And I ain't doing a very good job, but you know, you uh, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? That's that's like ever present. That's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? You can't uh, run from. If I just woke up tomorrow like I ain't doing music no more, that don't mean I'm not gonna have that same appeal to somebody that's been tuned in already. So I say to the ills or the downside of it is like, when you put yourself out there for the public, like, it ain't necessarily all positive. Everybody ain't gonna like you kind of thing. Like, being popular or whatever comes with another side to it. Like, be it uh, envy or whatever. Like, I mean, just like hood stuff. Like, everybody don't like, is everybody's not gonna like your come up. You know what I'm saying? And on the other side of that is like, people will go out their way. You know what I'm saying? Because you up or because you coming up. Just to, they just make themselves comfortable on the other side of that. Mm. And so it's like, I mean, you gotta, it's like the yin and yang, you gotta take the bitter with the sweet. It's not as if I would uh, trade in any successes just to avoid that, but it's just, that's the ills of it to come with it. Like, and there's just a lot of levels to it, man. Cause I've, you know, been through a lot. Mm. You know the game, Jack. It's the same all the way around. Yeah. They don't. There's a lot of people out there don't. What are some? What have been some of the ills of the game for you, Jack? Some of your ups and downs. Man. Um. <laughs> um. Hoes. <laughs> Hoes. Man. You chose them. I chose them. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. And uh, yeah, if I, if I could do it over again, uh, I would have been holeless. Yeah, that, that would have, that, I think that's the only one of the only things that, and I would have focused a little bit more, well, not a little bit more, a lot more on the business. That's something I would go back and tell the old Jack Thriller. Get the business part right. Get that shit right. It wasn't right. Man, fuck them hoes, yeah. I thought you was out here, goddamn, handling business, Jack. No, I was out here. I was, uh, I was on a, I was just working. And like I said, like you were saying earlier, it wasn't even about the business for me. I was trying to be heard, and then to the point where I was being heard so much, time would just was going by like that. Yeah. And then for next sure. thing you know, like. You be one of the most famous broke niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you gotta be, you gotta be cognizant of that and yep. pay attention to what's going on. Cause I was one of the first of my kind, you yeah. know, with that I'm trend, trendsetter pioneer. And so, you know, it's a, 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 a That's lot. a good question. Did the money change later? Cause yeah, you go yeah. from, like you said, you go from chasing the dream to having more than you ever thought you, you like, you have a number, then you get past that number. Now you yeah. like, yeah, it change you. It change your standards. It change, uh, you know, change the way you think. It change, uh, not necessarily like it, you know, change you for the worse, but uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to do this for free. I used to do this for nothing. And like, I catch myself in certain moments like, damn, I'm, I'm getting this to do that. For, you know, for something I would have done for free, would have done it just for, the sport of it or just the love of it. And um I you know, certain times I'm like, man, I gotta um I gotta get out there and just hustle. You know, because you, you can get spoiled. Yeah. You'll get spoiled, but you get used to like you said, once you figure out the business and you figure out how to capitalize or make it work for you, then it's like I catch myself in I I done it a couple times this year where I'm like, man, what um I'm doing features, you know. And, and uh, I'm trying to work with underdogs. I'm trying to work with people that I heard of. I'm trying to work with people's budgets, because I'm like... What's the process of getting a Lido feature these days? Well, uh, just tapping in with 
whatever the con I'll put a contact out there or you know profiles and otherwise like it's people that, that work with me or represent me in that regard answer the phone and mediate that kind of stuff I don't really like to deal with it hands on person unless I I know y'all that's why I don't do interviews I don't like talking to strangers really but yeah. the business of it is like <clears throat> I catch myself like man I'm gonna work with you I'm gonna work with your budget cause like I said, I used to do this for nothing. Like, just pay my daughter tuition. Like, go rap. Like, that's sweet, you know. But uh, it's a sweet lick almost. But I mean, it is work, and for sure, I built it up to where it's worth whatever to whoever, yeah. you know. But yeah, I mean, it does and, and will change you. That's I feel like it's any job. Like when you get to the point where you're professional or you. Ain't nobody working, not working for money on, on, you know, most levels. So, you know, the money sometimes can change how you approach the work. You know? yeah, yeah. How you react to shit, too. Yeah. You remember your first big purchase, man, when you started getting the money that you wanted? The These goddamn kool aids Oh. Uh, I mean, purchased a few things. I, I remember buying like at the time, like a dream car, stuff like that. Who was your dream car, man? That's called uh, shit right here. At the time, I, I was wanted a Porsche. I wanted a four door Porsche. Oh that yeah, was just, yeah. That was just you know coming up when I was first time I rode in one. I was like, I'm gonna get one of these, and and to eventually you know get one it was like, damn, I'm, I came up because I remember just. Seeing it, liking it, driving it, like, damn. Versus, and truthfully, a lot of stuff, once you get it, it's just a thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, just growing up, growing out of certain material things. I mean, I, I'm still on there. It's, it's things that I want and I go get it. Or I grind, you know, up to the point of being able to get it or to give you, know, aspiration, give you something to, something to work for. But I still want one. The only reason they didn't get one because my dog got one. I was like, I, I can't get one now. Yeah. I, I almost got enough to get mine. <laughs> I want a Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> like a replica Batmobile? No, a real, a real Batmobile. A real. Jack, Not ain't like nobody a... about to let you drive <laughs> shit, bro. It's over with. I just want it. I'm going to have get you a high driver. I'm going to have a, yeah, just have me a little Alfred ass nigga driving me around. Your car. <laughs> Thank you, Alfred. This nigga Jack on one, man. That's funny. Nigga. And the crazy part is he would wear a Batman suit every time he riding that motherfucker. I don't want him to know it's me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think they're gonna know it's you, a nigga in a Batman suit? Yeah. <laughs> what a st God damn it. And they're gonna see the star in my head. That's what I'm saying. You too fucking obvious, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Somebody yeah. draw Jack Thriller with a Batman suit on. <laughs> Make him look like the real Batman, too. But keep him as the same him. No, cough my body out a little bit. <laughs> nah, fucking Lee. <laughs> Give him some muscles, but leave the stomach and shit. It's gonna, <laughs> gonna have stomach muscles and shit. <laughs> you know, man, you fucking with any of this media shit now, man? Uh, I'm trying to figure it out, man. The same thing you said. Like, I'm trying to figure out the hustle of it. Like, trying to. I mean, I'm learning. I'm, I'm studying up on it. But, I mean, it's. We in a information age, but it's also like on demand culture. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I got traditional cable, but I don't use it. You know what I'm saying? I watch what I want to watch when I want to watch it. Like, we got yeah, everything. Yeah, that's like, the best part about this yeah. shit, bro. I never thought that you would be able to pick what the fuck you want to watch on TV. Right. I got right. a five stick, $10 a month. Is it? I can watch everything, Every all the fights, all the porno, but I don't watch the porno. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the fuck he do. <laughs> you know that's all he watch. <laughs> Who loaded saying? it up for you? Uh, my boy Sam, Sam Audio. All right. Man. If you need a fire stick, nigga, I need one. Jay, give me one. I got you already. Appreciate that. How many How many TVs you got? 
I got a gang of them. Give me about five of them. Five TVs? Yeah. Okay, cool. Give me about five of them. That sounds like it. Hey, it's on me. I got you. Appreciate it. Hey, so how you feel about it? Like, obviously, like, you exist in that space. Um, like, what we doing now, even. How you feel about it being on um, such a populated space now? Like, it's, I, it's underpopulated. You, you still think that's the case? Yeah, because you got to think about it. As black people, man, we at least 200 years behind in communication. Mm. We, I was just about to say, I just watch people talk all the time on YouTube. This is the like, thing about it, watch. bro. We, this is, we at that time right now where we... Oh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, February the 27th, the 2023, listen, at the Goodyear Theater in Akron, Ohio, guess who's going to be there? Me! Hell yeah, 7 o'clock. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. Grab them tickets and meet me in Akron, Ohio at 7 o'clock. Do you hear me? 7 o'clock. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And one thing about us, baby, we gonna be outside. And we gonna do some karaoke. Y'all have been asking us for the longest to have a karaoke night, and we finally got that shit together. Yes. And on top of that, not only is it just me and Lex, we got music soul child, too. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to have your moment and really sing in front of everybody and blow, you I don't care if you singing, juggling, rapping, whatever you do, we want y'all to send y'all tapes in. Now yes. there's only a few slots available. Mm -hmm. You have to be in Atlanta. This event is at City Winery in Atlanta on March 1st. So you have to be in Atlanta to participate. So if you're in Atlanta, send your tape in. We want to hear you sing, rap, juggle. Blow fire. Whatever you do. Whatever you do, we want to see that shit. Right. Send the tapes in. And mind you, this is a competition. So me, music, Andrea will be judging you. And on top of that, if you win, you getting the grand prize. Mm -hmm. So make sure y'all come and see us. And even if you just want to come turn up, Come on, City Winery. Come watch the show. Yeah, come watch the show. Link below. See y'all soon. Period. Got the freedom to communicate with each other. Mm. Even if we don't necessarily like or agree with the content, mm. we still need to hear the other opinions of other people who look like us. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because let them tell it. Like, we only let 1% of us represent us. Mm. Because we don't have no way to rebuttal. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? So when shit happens and they pick a, the black story of the week, we don't get, we don't have no platform where we could be like, that's not true. Right, or well, that's not the real story. That's not it, that's yeah. not all of us. We, I mean, like, we need platforms like this where we can express ourselves and give our opinions, man. Yeah. Because we don't, ha like, we're not represented in a lot of places. Yeah, I, I feel that. I just... I watch so many things of like people, you know, it's like almost history. Like, I mean, like you, you asking me questions to catch people up to speed on my story, but just so many things I watch people get out of jail and then they tell they, they're giving their war stories of like, you might have heard of this person, but now let's give them a, you know what I'm saying? They got a whole running series of, yeah, this is all the crazy stuff I was doing to make that name for myself. And it's right. like, man, that's better than, not necessarily better, but that's as captivating as watching a sitcom. Or watching, it fill in a whole lot of blanks. It right. give you, it fill out the character profile. Like, yeah, on so okay. many levels. Like, yeah, this what you've been through? That, okay, now it makes sense. Now it's like, okay, that's the way, that, that's, that's why you are the way you are. Cause right. you've been through so much shit. Of course you don't want to talk about that type of shit. Look at, look at what you survived. Yeah. Like we, uh, you grow up like big in Tupac. Even that was a that was an era. That was a time. Yeah. But here we are, for 25 or so years later, right. and you getting firsthand accounts of so many people that were right there. You know, yeah. and it's like, damn. I mean, they're gone. Of course, they can't tell their own story. But it's like, damn. This is, this is vivid. Obviously, we didn't, like you said, we couldn't chronicle it in real time, and it wasn't like people walk around with camera phones like, like and think them. about it you said 25 years think of how many people have come and gone in the last 25 years that haven't been mentioned in 24 years yeah these so, look how much shit they were able to accomplish in 25 years them dudes was young as hell when they died 
Yeah. And look how much shit they got. They still trying to put out pieces of verses and outtakes and you know what I mean? Still trying to put something together to keep that legacy going, man. That's I impact. I ain't think about it as an underpopulated space because it's so much to consume, but that's just as I was like the internet and yeah. like just. <clears throat> it's so much dope content being put out by black people that's not being recognized. Mm. That's like, there's so many other other people that can just rip the content off for free and yeah. do their version of the content that they saw. Because they know that the people that they're stealing from they ain't gonna never get the same opportunities as them. Yeah. You hear, you see it every day. <clears throat> so. But as black people, we all, we like, everybody like, man, everybody got a podcast. It's not even that. Mm. We are very un underrepresented in the media space, period, man. We do, need to take over media. We're the most think, entertaining people. Do you think that that <clears throat> kind of comes with it as almost like a stigma or just a thought that oh, everybody's doing it because a lot of the stuff is like parallel or similar? Like a lot of... A lot of platforms, a lot of people are are kind of doing the same, a similar version, or the, the I don't want to say the same things, but I don't know That's what works. Yeah, think about it. You don't think it's some motherfuckers out here in college who do some black kids doing podcasts about physics and graduating and dropping out of college. Look, the shit that goes viral is the shit that's picked by the people. Mm. Of course the podcast with all them fine ass strippers gonna go viral. Yeah. So you gonna think that every podcast is this type of content. Mm. But if you like shit, you have to find it. Yes, I do. And that's what I'm saying. Like, can you imagine what it would be like if you could flip the fucking TV? And as opposed to it being just BET and a couple channels with some black people on it, it was a whole fucking channel of black people. Every one of these 800,000 channels that you got, 700,000 of them is black. Like, we, ain't, we don't have enough variety of shit to pick the shit that we don't like. It's only one of one of one of one of one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I encourage everybody to make a podcast or just some some kind of media or content, something, yeah. even if it's, like I said, it don't have to be my favorite, but that don't mean that it don't have to exist. We got this thing about it only being one. Mm. We need variety, man. We need to be seen as much as possible. Yeah, I, I, I guess for myself, because the ideas I had for it, like one that incorporates sports, and like I said, just, current things with my interests. I'm just not that, I'm not that like outward or, or that candid. Um, I don't really personally, like I feel like we we do have all those tools, but I don't like to overshare. I, I actually be in a space of feeling like, man, nobody care what I think about it. I'm sure somebody does somewhere, yeah. but to make that. That's what make people go buy music. Yeah, but I feel that like point of view. I feel like I've always done it through the music. Yeah. And at a point, if I'm for sure, like you said, it's it's a space for it. But I'm like, if I commit all this energy to doing it as a talking personality, am I gonna take away from what goes into my artistry? Cause I I, have, I always like tried to weave what was going on around me, like in the current sense. Like some of my projects is, or some of my raps, even a, a time capsule. Like I'm like referencing things that are very much of the now kind of thing. Right. I'm like, well, if I, you know, do it on this level, is that gonna take me away from being able to do it as a writer, as an artist? Or, See, this is one thing that I noticed about the internet though. The internet gave shit layers. You haven't seen the way that this shit works? It's like, they got this show, right, where artists be in their neighborhood or just on the spot where they just drop a microphone down and they'll rap a verse or perform a whole song. Yeah. And then they'll go to this other show where they can break down the lyrics, mm -hmm. line by line by line. Then you can go do Tiny Desk, where you can just perform this same song where you saw a raw version. The same song where you just broke down the lyrics. Now they want to see you perform it on Tiny Desk. Then they want to see you perform it at the awards show. Mm -hmm. 
Then they want to see you do the remix and do a whole nother video and add Lido to the second verse. Then they want to see the techno version and the TikTok got another version and then the Instagram got a, it's like, this shit ain't just a song no more. Yeah. It's never too much. It's what have you done for me lately. Right. You got to keep on pounding them inside the head and whatnot. And one thing about, you know, doing interviews and you exposing yourself and whatnot, there's some people that hadn't heard your music, but they'll see you on an interview and like, man, I like Lito. You know what? Watch I'm going to go fuck with his this music. Is, this is the digital age. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers that have a TikTok of your voice, of a line from your song, no idea what this song is. Right. No idea that it's your song. Then made 12 videos of your tradition. This sound alone of your voice then got 220 million likes this last week. They don't even need the whole song no more. Mm. They will take three seconds of you saying, nah, I'm Gucci. And that shit <laughs> is the trend. <laughs> Bitches be tripping. It's, you out of there. Yeah. But I, I mean, for sure, that's that's what's going on. That's the way it is. But like, <clears throat> man, as an artist, it almost like there's a part of me that almost feels like those processes kind of dull, or I don't know how to describe it. It kind of dulls out some of the. You're a purist. Yeah, I was gonna say the 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 pure value of it. Like, as, see, my goal as an artist is to be the breaking point. Mm. I don't want to. I don't have to be the number one. I don't have to be the best. But when the conversation comes up in my field, I want to be the nigga that changed the conversation. When they be like, "Oh, such and such was a great comedian. Oh, he wasn't fucking with Bernie Mac though. Yeah. Oh, but y'all, hey, but Carlos Miller, shut your ass up. That's all. I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah. I want to be the motherfucking shit." In the conversation, I want to so, be the breaking point that make everybody start arguing. Use a motherfucking lie. They ain't fucking with Carlos. Yeah, I can dig that. I think, um, like, how we was talking about how, how music is consumed, how, like, how things stick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe three seconds, it might be a clip, or maybe a sound bite. I feel like there's just different things, different ways to go with the music. And when I kind of set aside the idea of making my music programmable and wanting to make music to be felt. It's like, I just don't care about the the, the trendiness of and the it pageantry. All. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm like, I, I'm you think a lot it. of niggas out here cooning on these uh, these yeah. interviews and shit. I look I at mean, it as like, like they said, preserving wearing, it. Wearing, wearing a mask. Mm. It's wearing a mask. And, and I mean, some of it is is environmental. Some of it is is we doing, we've done what we've seen. Like I said, I'm in a space where I'm like, oh shit, how do, how do I make this work for me? Like I see, yeah. like I said, I want one of those. Mm. What I gotta do to get the, you know, and a lot of times you can lose yourself. You can mm. look like, really all you gotta do is, like you said, like be the ship, like make it, bring something new to the table, right? right? Like innovation or whatever. But a lot of times it's like, oh, he got on on some tough ass shit, so I gotta be, I gotta be tougher. I gotta yeah. be, you know, I gotta take it. Man, they had, they had five guns in that video. Bro, bring some more guns. I mean, for example, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's just like where it's kind of, and that's, I mean, that's one example or whatever it is. And it's like, man, you'll you'll lose yourself. Like you'll lose the purity of it. Like, yeah, but. I you want to know what we said on the rest of this video? Go to that. <laughs> just in case you're wondering what we're doing, we are now showing you just how important having the 85 South Show app is because you was watching this show thinking, oh, they done finally put the shit back on YouTube. No. They was listening. We weren't. We weren't. It's on the app. It's on the app. The rest of this, listen, the rest of the audio is on the app. <laughs> Now, you gotta know what we Woo. said, you gotta go get the app. That's the 85 South Show app. It's available on Amazon, five stick. 
Apple TV, wherever you get your subscription. No, it's not. It's, it's just, not on Apple it's just TV. available directly where they sell apps. Or they don't sell apps on Apple TV? It's where well, y'all should fuck with us too, Apple TV. Roku. Hell wrong with y'all. It fuck is Roku. on there. Put it on Roku. Don't say fuck nobody. No, I didn't say fuck them. I said put it. I know we fuck with them. Oh, we do. My house full of Roku's. Oh. It's Roku the most everywhere. Yeah. So subscribe to the app. It's only $8.99 a month or $85 a year. So you get a whole year for $85. Did yeah. you know that? It's $8.50 and then you got to pay tax. Yeah. So, you know, it's $8. You know, we get them all type of content. You know what? We're not even going to tell them who you got your glasses from until they get it on the app. I mean, hey, you got to watch the app. The app is available. All of these people that say we should keep putting this on YouTube for free. What about the years of freeness that we've already provided upon you? We gave this away for Let's free for years. Let's move together. Why would you let somebody come year. invest in the show and put it on another network and you're buying their subscription? You don't ask them why you're buying their shit. So don't ask us. We're putting it on the app. Who's over the app? Nobody knows. Get the app. Yeah. We saw what you said in the comments. You sure did. We saw it. We saw everybody. The good, the you bad. Got somebody to read every fucking comment. And the ugly. See so you know what? We folding under this pressure. Sure did. We hear you. We heard. We hear you. We win and did. We'll That's just get the fuck on out your way. Yeah. Just for an hour though. Yep. That's yep. all you get is an hour. So don't you can't complain. Well, where the rest of it? I at? think they should get 37 minutes. Oh, see, we gotta hurry yeah, we up. We just put a whole bunch of ads in between, like long ads, ads, like five minute ads. Hey, how you doing? Uh, you, you. Slow motion ads. Slow, slow it down. Waste a motherfucking time. Yeah, uh, let's just, uh, Go ahead and make sure. Channel85.com. I want to make sure I read what they wrote. They wrote some shit out for us. These niggas don't know how to spell or type proper sentences, but they trying get to get 85. us to get y'all to buy the app. What, you think we want to read this shit? Channel85, man. So we can talk that shit, man. Ladies, don't you like the deep thrust? Huh? Go get it on the app. Yeah. That's right. On the app. Uncensored, unfiltered, and edited. Can you believe that? I'm talking about with actual production in it. Thanks. Jump cuts, yep. clips, all types of types of like exclusive shit that they don't even know that we did. They don't even know that we got a show where we be cooking like exotic foods and shit. Okay. That's on the we app. Got a sport show. Yep. Talk show, documentary. Chico got a handwriting class that he teaches. <laughs> Nobody passed it. Cause Nobody. that's why the shit look like right. this. But we're working on it, and you can see it on the app. They didn't, on the app. E didn't even tell them about the tax course that we had uploaded on there. No cap. They don't even know that we, we got we a whole show about Wall Street. And a $5,000 on the app. Right. <laughs> and we got the alternate ending to the color purple up there. Oh, right. man. No cap. We got the raw edition, all the uncut, all the bloopers. We got all that. Right. It's on the app. Yeah. So if you want to see some shit that, you know, they trying to hide from you. Go to that. I'm leaving though. Channel85.com. Go get the app. You got an hour for free. We gave you what you wanted. Now give us some subscriptions to the app. $8.50. Eight ninety nine with tax. $85 a year. Channel85.com. 85 South Show. Get the app. Well, see, this is what they don't know. The app really $3, but adjusted for inflation is $8.00. Done. Yeah. Well, low C. Get the app, man. Stop bullshitting. We out of here, man. We're not about to keep working all this time for. Been for free. Uh, we are going on out, baby. We are going on out. We on your way to fly. On air. <laughs> <laughs>